Hello everyone and welcome to this week's um Tea Time with Torlath, let's call it that. Today I wanna talk about the way I play games now. Because it's not the same as it used to be. Uh, I used to buy a few games a year and well I buy like a, a pile of games and that would be what I played basically. But now I have access to, to game pass and I'm literally spoiled for choice. Uh, I get access to hundreds of games and and there's EA Play on top of it, which I, I haven't even touched on EA Play. I've been a person that's kind of avoided EA games for most of the PS3 generation. After they closed down Visceral, after that awful excuse for a Dead Space sequel that was Dead Space 3, I kind of swore off them until they, they smartened up. And... With Jedi Fallen Order, I feel like they actually spartaned up. It was it was the first game that they'd released with no microtransactions in it. That it also unfortunately kept me from playing uh, games like um, A Way Out until recently. But to be honest, I have a much better co-op partner for that now. And... People have different expectations for, for Game Pass and for, like, the PlayStation and whatever. And to be honest, when Microsoft and Sony are trying to be the best consumer-friendly product, we can't help but win. You know? Um, yes, Sony right now seems to be taking... Maybe more of an Apple approach. I don't want to say like it's completely an Apple approach. Where they're trying to sell you a, a single game for full price. This is not, obviously. Sell you one of their games for full price. And keep you buying them, like releasing one basically a blockbuster a month. Whereas Microsoft wants to do something more service-based and love it or hate it I think the service-based model makes a lot of sense because discoverability on games unless you're like a big big time publisher like you have the the marketing hero or name that people care about it can be hard to get your game discovered And in the age of indie devs and easier dev tools, some games can just become obscure and never see success until way later. Perfect example, Among Us. That game came out almost three years ago now, and it's like a smash hit because people started playing it in the middle of a pandemic. And it's nice to see that, you know, a game by such a small team with such an interesting premise gets any sort of recognition. And it's very rare that games like that get that kind of money. Or you get a second chance at a launch that much later. The companies like Sony and Microsoft have to advertise for these games most of the time. Getting included in a showcase is a big deal. Some games like uh, Altair Raza, we got numbers for Altair Raza 2, it was like 330,000 units shipped. 
I don't know if that included digital, but... Under 400,000 units for a game from Poe Tecmo. Now granted, that's only Switch, PS4, and Steam. But that's still a niche game, like, from Koei Tecmo and Gust. And I honestly am surprised at how... I thought it would be closer to like 500 or 600,000 units, but it's not. But then you see a game like Nier or... Oh, we got Nier. And we have... Balan Wonderworld. Like, Balan Wonderworld was... A flop, I guess, with all the unsold copies. I think not because the copies, because the game is bad, but because the game released the same week as Monster Hunter Rise in Japan. And people are going to want to play Monster Hunter Rise. So... Being honest with everybody, game discoverability matters. And Microsoft's service-based approach is giving a lot of these games free advertisement, basically. Actually, Microsoft's paying to advertise their game. And it's not to be tooting their horn because Sony does advertise some games. But like the Microsoft Twitter is like, check out these games. And anything that's added to Game Pass gets pretty much put in like a little lineup with games I would argue sometimes are much higher caliber or much better known. Uh, like look at Outriders. Outriders was a game that when it originally got announced, no one cared about. I remember seeing it and being like, uh, that looks okay. It's a game from people can fly. It'll probably sell a few hundred thousand units, and then that'll be the end of it. But what happened instead? It was a huge success in its launch month. Because it was day one on Game Pass, it had all those active users in a service-based game that matters. And yeah, it still sold well on Steam and other places because it got free advertising from influencers and people online. If Twitch streamers are playing a game because it's just there, if, you know, it's, it's hard to put into words, but there's so many games that have just been signal boosted because of game. Yes, you're going to have your Resident Evils, your Monster Hunters, your Call of Duties that sell, like, gangbusters. But it's something to be said that the amplifying effect of Game Pass and just Twitch streamers having Game Pass and wanting, like, a variety of games to play for their audience does add a lot. Do I hate Sony's I want to make a blockbuster every month kind of model? I don't... Okay, they're, they're doing the time exclusivity thing, and there's a bunch of games that are in lieu right now that would be nice to see make it to other platforms. But there's also other games that are PlayStation only, which I don't think there was any money spent to have them be PlayStation only. And I think... The faster we see the console numbers and the player player base expand for both sides because right now you have to remember that neither console has reached saturation point what i mean by that is you have the hardcore gamers like myself look I'm, we're hardcore if you have an Xbox console right now, you're either a really lucky 
kid who's or Xbox or PlayStation, I should say. You're really lucky kid who got whose family like wanted to please you. Or you were like me and you got lucky and just picked one up on a restock. So you can face the coming storm. There's a lot of people that aren't so lucky and they're still trying to get them. Both consoles. Until we've reached a point where everyone that all the hardcore people, all of us die hard, play games every day, live, breathe, eat, sleep games, gets their console. And the average Joe can walk into a store, go online, and purchase one from their retailer's choice, will have reached saturation. But we're not there yet. And when we do, it's going to be very interesting to see where the numbers are. Because I think when both consoles reach saturation point, the numbers are going to be pretty high. And they're probably going to be pretty close. And the reason I think that is that both of them are taking very wildly different approaches. But neither console of the two we're not putting the switch in there because the switch is just another thing entirely but between the xbox series and the ps5 there is something to be said that both have had a strong first showing and because of this strong first showing I think it's going to be a long and interesting generation. And I think that we might be surprised who's on top at the end. Because a lot of people are probably predicting that Sony will be on top. We just saw that one. And I think it's going to be closer than people thought. I don't think it's going to be like, well, Microsoft has a sweeping advantage. No, I, I, I would not be surprised if we get to the end of this. Uh, Nintendo releases a third console and it wipes the floor with the other two in uh, Japan and a couple other regions, but I think between the Xbox series and the PS5, it is going to be a very close race for a very long time because both companies are putting some, well, Microsoft's putting some serious money down to show gamers how serious they are about the Xbox brand and how serious they are about gaming in general. And that can only be good for us. Like, Game Pass, whether you like it or not, is changing things in the industry. And games are getting more exposure that wouldn't get more exposure if they weren't on Game Pass. And we've heard this from developers. And we've seen the numbers. We've seen the numbers. We saw Outriders. We saw the outrage from the hardcore PlayStation community when MLB The Show 21... I don't remember if they're like 20... Yeah, they're 21. Sorry. I don't remember if they do the year ahead or whatever thing. But MLB The Show being on Game Pass day one got a lot of PlayStation gamers really salty because the game was still full price on PS4 and PS5. Actually more expensive on PS5. They had the cross-gen version. But it was cross-gen on, on Xbox. And it's just on Game Pass. It's a thing that's just there. I didn't play it because I really have very little interest in baseball. But my sister, she's a bigger baseball fan. She might actually have gone and played it, for all I know. It's one of those things where if... From the clouds they die. I were to tell you they find each other 15 years ago in the dark embrace of the cold sea. how the PS3 
PS4, Xbox One generation would go. You'd probably say it was crazy because it was neck and neck going into that generation. But if I told you before that generation happened, halfway through, that Sony was going to sweepingly take it, and then Microsoft was going to come back in the middle with a console, with a more powerful console, and a new service idea, and push to maybe not take the market lead spot, but to give Sony a run for their money, you'd probably say I was crazy. But that's what happened. And it's been so interesting. Honestly, when Sony was just on top, on top, on top, no one cared about stuff coming for Xbox. Yeah, people cared a bit about Sea of Thieves coming because it had a PC launch, and it launched in kind of a okay state. But when they started refining things like the Windows Store and Game Pass for PC, Game Pass for console, Game Pass Ultimate being a thing, and then they added EA Play, and now they've added Bethesda games. Like, granted, there are some Bethesda games that are missing, but I'm assuming they are stuck in limbo with some sort of contract and someone in the legal department at Microsoft and or Bethesda is working on rectifying that problem because I'm surprised a game like The Evil Within 2 isn't there yet. Um, Wet and a couple others. Like, I would just put whatever you had on there and see what sticks. And that's the thing, too, right? Is you need to remember that EA Play came to Game Pass and then a game like Titanfall 2, which I played recently, got a massive boost in, like, active users and people were just like where did we miss this game it's so good what happened why did i miss this game because it came out at a bad time it a hundred percent came out at a bad time wow do i have to call you brilkermus prime now but let's be real everyone wants to play that's why you buy a console. And honestly, when both of these companies are going nuts at each other. And yeah, I haven't talked a lot about what Sony's doing because, you know, the play at home initiative is, is good. And they have given some good games with no strings attached, but at the same time, they're kind of old. And I'll say that, yeah, Microsoft maybe hasn't given a bunch of games, but they've got Game Pass. And Game Pass has these huge, huge titles on them. And more stuff's coming. We're not even in June yet. June is when E3 happens. When E3 happens again, the first time in forever. Well, in like two years, it feels, it feels like forever. Okay, it feels like forever. But when we get E3 again, and we get to see what Bethesda, what Xbox has to show for this year, and even Sony, I want to see what everyone's got to show for this year. Because, the, you know, Canada Bridge of Spirits got shown at the PlayStation desk. I want to see that game. It's on the Epic Store. Not quite out yet. We got games like Lost and Random that EA showed off from their um, EA Originals, I think it's their indie thing called. What? Show me them cards. Show me the games. You know? Like... That's what I want to see, is I want to see what's new. What do you have to show me? Like, there's an update coming for Jedi Fallen Order. That game's almost three years old at this point. By the time that update comes out, well, they said it's summer, so it'd be getting close to three years. And it's still getting updated. And then we're seeing all these EA Play games get FPS boost on Xbox. What is going on? This didn't happen last gen at all. Like PS2 
360 to Xbox One, PS4. Upgrades between gens was not a thing that happened. Not for free, anyway. Like, now it's like, free, 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 upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. Every game gets an upgrade. Gears 5 upgrade. Oh. And then even games that are coming out that are, like, near Xbox One. I can tell you, because I played this on both my uh, Xbox One S and my Series X. This game looks sharper, clear, and just plays nicer on the Series X. But it's still playable on the Xbox One S. It's just blurrier. Like, faster load times. This didn't even get an update. That's what I'm saying. Like, games are getting updates left, right, and center. This was unheard of. And I think what you're seeing is the game industry pushing from a... Like, you put out the game and then it's done. Sort of model. To games having longer tails. Where a game that's three or so years old. Yeah, okay, they discounted a couple times. But there's still value in it. And people are understanding that there's a value in older games. And that's why it felt tone deaf when Sony announced that they were closing the PS3 What's and Vita stores. And for those of you who have questioned the my old loyalty the to the PlayStation the ecosystem, I present to you, you my PlayStation Vita. Streets of Rome will allow it. Prefer to be stealthy and slink around With in the shadows? Back. Go ahead and get your cardboard You can't see on. it that well, but it's... Want it's, to live out the classic a, film hackers? Uh, Hyperdimension Neptune V3. Or you can just hire a bunch of goons to do your dirty work for you. But like... Whatever gets the job done. I own a Vita. To throw a toilet at someone? Causing I was to get a PlayStation super loyalist a until they started hurting the, the small independent developers in Japan that made games... The game doesn't have a morality scale. that Streets helped me help me start to learn Japanese with advanced artificial intelligence that won't and teach me things. Your crap and doesn't like yes, your they're kind jokes. of smutty. Yes, Does they're not like AI something I would recommend to everyone. Alone, bring a real human friend. Heck, but at the same time, with local and online modes, you don't even have to be in the same room or continent. Streets of Rogue has randomly generated cities that change every When we time start you saying play, what games so should and shouldn't game forever, be made, forever, forever, we're not being good. You get bored. It's not good. And there's a whole I shouldn't have stuff to tell to people what Items they like are and aren't allowed to make. And the, boom box. the same with and 24 character game classes class. like the friendly police. The same officer. with what Sony's doing. And the zombie. Aw, he Look. started his own adorable mini apocalypse. What? Don't like those? I love video games, own. and Here I'm I'm ready for E3. I'm Look, ready for everything. People for extra help. Like, I have a smile on my face. I'm excited. So friends with a ghost. Go hunting for wild but toxic console war stuff doesn't fire. help. And yeah, I kind of got caught in it at yours. some point. And it's yeah, someone stuff. might pull out tweets from me and be like, "You did. You said this." And it's like. And that was the thing. We were talking about Return. A game I have not played yet. I haven't looked at anything for it. Because I don't have a PS5. And there's no way I'm getting one anytime soon. But Returnal... And people are like, well, it's a good game. It doesn't matter if it's a good game. It's more expensive than other games. One that puts at a disadvantage. I see you're a painter. I'm Excuse quite partial it's a to new IP. Beaches. It's coming out this is splendid. a week or two be piece before. Of my I have some work for a painter like Resident Evil Village. Like Resident Evil Village is next week, isn't it? Is this week coming? Oh my god, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I gotta finish near. 
I gotta finish this video. But I think that's gonna be a big factor is if you if you're saying that your games are so much better than other games that they're ten dollars more when there's other games that are coming out that are cheaper at the same time that could cannibalize your sales just because the other games are cheaper or someone knows the IP better Sony is trying to capitalize on their on their brand and their you name and again I have nothing against doing it. that both sides are gonna do it even Nintendo does it. Looking for the wrong thing. But I'm just saying, it's gonna be an interesting year. I babbled for like 25 minutes! You know, I'm, I'm just gonna sign off and put up this jumbled mess of thoughts on the, the internet. So... Put your thoughts in the comments below about what you're excited for. And uh, if you like this kind of off the cuff, three in the morning recorded uh, video, where I probably look terrible. But um, if you if you enjoyed this sort of random rambly sort of video, um, please uh, like below. Um, I look forward to making more videos and I think I'm going to try and make a near video, but it's going to be rough because if Resident Evil 8 that close, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh, I'm so excited for Resident Evil 8. You guys turn out. Games. We're getting the games. All right, until next time, matane!